All right, so in, in 12.2, we're gonna figure out about these angles and how to measure them. We're gonna measure them in degrees. Um, later, we're gonna end up doing something called radians. So we're gonna be learning how to convert back and forth between um, degrees and radians. But for now, we're gonna start with just measuring these angles and what they look like in something called standard position. So let me just give you a quick sketch of exactly what standard position means. Um, we consider it to be in standard position if it looks like this. All right, so let me kind of set everything up for you. We've got a little coordinate system here. So it's in standard position if we call this guy right here the initial side. So if the angle starts right here, call this initial side. And then the angle always opens up counterclockwise. So let's say it ends like here, whatever this is. So like this would be our angle. It always opens up counterclockwise like that. All right, so moving kind of backwards around what a normal clock would be. So it opens counterclockwise and then it ends, so we consider this to be the terminal side of the angle. All right, so that right there would be our angle. So this would be somewhere between 90 and 180 degrees, probably closer to 180. So that's what an angle looks like in standard form. Um, it's centered right at the origin here and then it opens from there. Okay, so in standard position, this is, I mean, this is kind of normal. We're really not going to see any angle that's in anything but standard position. So first thing you guys are be doing, going to be doing is just familiarizing yourself with this format. So first thing, 210 degrees. Let's draw exactly what that looks like. So we set up a coordinate system. So we know that this guy right here is going to be our initial side. That's how it's going to open. So this is 90 degrees. Let's label these on here. Here's 90, 180, 270. And we consider this to be 0 slash 360. It's where we start, but it's also where our, our full circle ends. All right, so 210 is going to be somewhere between 180 and 270. It's going to be about 30 degrees more than 180, so something like that. All right, so this right here would be our 210 degree angle. All right, this one's a little interesting because it's negative 45. What a negative angle does, it still starts on the initial side here, but then it actually opens backwards. Like, see how this one's opening forward, starting from here and wrapping its way counterclockwise? A negative angle like that would actually go backwards. So if we go 45 degrees backwards, then it would end right about there. So it would actually open this way, which is what it means whenever we have a negative angle like that. All right, next thing is sort of like a story problem. In springboard diving competition, diver made a 900 degree rotation before slicing into the water. So let's draw an angle in standard position that measures 900. So whenever you wrap around multiple times, you kind of do this little spiral sort of thing. Um, so let's make it look like this. So initial side. So wraps around once, that's 360. Wrap around again, that's 720. So now let's go 90 more. And that's going to be at 810. And then 90 more is going to be 900. So that's where that ends. This right here ends at a 900 degree angle. Okay, so it lands in the same place that a 180 degree angle does, but it wraps around a bunch of times. So that's how you graph something that ends up being more than um, the 360 degrees. So it really, it's like 360, which is one full revolution, plus 360, which is another full revolution, and then plus 180 degrees. So that's why it lands in the same place as the 180. All right, coterminal angles, speaking of landing in the same place as 180, coterminal angles are angles that land with the same terminal side. Okay, so coterminal angles are angles that land on the same terminal side. All right, so it's gonna be pretty easy to figure out exactly how to find those terminal angles because we just either add or subtract a multiple of 360. All right, so you might take whatever the angle is and you might add 360 to get a coterminal angle. You might take the angle and subtract 360 to get another coterminal angle or a multiple. You could add 720, you could add 1080, wherever will land you on the same place, which means just adding or subtracting multiples of 360. All right, so let's do a quick example like that. These ones, we want to find a positive angle and a ne negative angle that are coterminal with these ones. So 210, so quick and easy way to do this. We're just going to take that angle, we're going to add 360, we're going to subtract 360. All right, so for the positive one, we're going to start with our angle, and then we're going to go one lap forward. 
So we add those together and we would get 570 degrees. So that means that 570 lands in the exact same place as 210 does. All right, and then to find a negative angle, what we do is we start in that position, but then we go 360 degrees backwards. So when you go backwards, if you go a full lap, you're still gonna land in the same place, but we're gonna technically consider it to be a negative angle. Okay, so if we go backwards, we've got 210, this time minus 360, which would leave us with negative 150. So negative 150 would also be in the exact same spot on that circle. Okay, so let's do this again with negative 120. For the positive one, we're at negative 120, and then we're gonna go forward 360 degrees land right back at the same place. And so this is gonna be 150 degrees. And then for the negative, we can actually go even further. Oops, that was not supposed to be 210. It's supposed to be 120. Sorry, I was looking right up above. Let's try that again. So we've got negative 120 and positive 360. So that would land in the same spot as positive 240. Sorry about that. And the negative one, we start at negative 120 and we're gonna go even farther back. So a full lap in the opposite direction and that will land us at negative 480. So you could always use a calculator for these, but some of the numbers should be easy enough to do just quickly in your head. All right, so the next major thing we're gonna be dealing with here is converting back and forth between degrees and radians. So degrees are the measurements that you guys have been in. Some of you noticed over the last couple of days that your calculators may have been set in radian mode. Radian is the other way to measure angles. It's kind of like measuring length in either inches or centimeters or feet or meters or whatever. It's just two different names, essentially, two different systems of measurement for the exact same thing. Um, and a radian comes from the radius of a circle, and it basically comes from the idea of a circumference or an arc length. All right, so if we look, um, just a quick little, quick little picture here. Let's draw a circle. Put it in the middle of a coordinate system here. All right, so if we consider this to have a radius of one, what we do is we figure out what percentage of the circumference that would be. All right, so if we say that the circumference is two pi times r, if we give it a radius of one, then it would be just two pi times one. So if we go all the way around the circle, that would be two pi. So going all the way around the circle in radians, we consider that to be 2 pi. So going all the way around in degrees is 360. Going all the way around in radians, we consider that to be 2 pi. And it's just because of this relationship with the circumference. Okay, so all the way around, one complete revolution would be 2 pi radians. So we've got that right there as well. Okay, so converting back and forth between them. So 2 pi in radians is equal to 360 in degrees. Okay, so going back and forth between the two of them, if you were trying to get just one radian, the way you get one radian is by dividing both sides of this by 2 pi. Okay, so divide both sides of this by 2 pi, and we would end up with one radian equals, and this 360 and two can reduce down. So we write 100 pi over 80 times the number of degrees. Okay, so that's how you convert one way. And then we do the exact same thing to convert the other way. Two pi in radians is the same as 360 degrees. So if we're trying to get just one degree, we can divide both sides by 360. All right, so one degree is the same as, and again, we can reduce these twos, pi over 180 radians. Okay, so I wanna make you guys this little table, and I left room for it down here. I probably should've left a space right here, but it's like this little, this little table and converting back and forth. Okay, so if we wanna go from radians to degrees or vice versa. So let's say we're in radians and we wanna get into degrees. So for in radians and we wanna convert into degrees, what we do is we multiply by 180 over pi. So if we look at this, if we have a radian and we wanna convert it into degrees, we multiply it by 180 over pi. If on the other hand you have the measurement in degrees and you wanna get it into radians, 
you multiply by pi over 180. Okay, so those are the conversion factors. Let's use those conversion factors really quickly. So if we have 30 degrees, 30 degrees, if we want to get it from degrees into radians, we multiply by pi over 180. Okay, so what you do is you treat this as like 30 over 1 and see if there's anything we can reduce. And notice the 30 and 180 are both multiples of 30. So we can divide them both by 30, and this will leave you with 6. So this reduces down to pi over 6. Okay, so pi over 6 would be the radian measure that's the same as 30 degrees, kind of like converting back and forth between pounds and kilograms or in inches and centimeters or whatever. Okay, this one, if we're in radians, we've got negative 5 pi over 3. If we're currently in radians and we want to convert to degrees, we multiply by 180 over pi. So notice one of the things that will happen here is your pi's are always going to cancel. Because when you're in degrees, you don't have pi's in the measurement, but you do when you're in radians. And then the 3 and 180 will reduce down. Divide that by 3, divide that by 3. And we can simplify this up. So we have negative 5 times 60, which would be negative 300 degrees. Okay, so that's our conversion back and forth. Um, the last thing that I want us to start filling out is something that we call a unit circle. And the unit circle is just how we measure things in both degrees and radians. All right, so let me show you. Um, we're going to start with degrees, and the degrees are super easy. Um, so we've just got 0, 90, 180, probably should have a little degree mark here, 270, and then we end also at 360. Okay, so we know those. Um, we also can go by 45, so this is 45 degrees, another 45 degrees. Adding 45 degrees here would leave us at 235, or not 235, sorry, 135 degrees. 180, and then add 45 again, would be at 225. 270, add 45 again, we're at 315. And then these are 30 degree measurements. So if we do 30 plus 30 plus 30, Plus 30, plus 30, plus 30. And just keep adding 30 as we go all the way around here. 30 here, add 30, add 30 to that, and add 30 one more time. We land back at 360. Okay, so those are our degrees all the way around the circle. Um, we can also convert into radians. Um, so I'm going to write the radians in red. So we also start here at zero, and then we figured out that one revolution would be two pi. All right, so a really easy way that we can do this is just start to like cut those values in half. So if a full revolution is two pi, then half a revolution would just be one pi. Okay, and then we can cut that in half. Half of pi would be pi divided by two. Halfway between 1 pi and 2 pi would be 1 and a half pi, which is like 3 halves pi. So that's this measurement right here. And we're going to spend a lot more time with this as the chapter goes on, so don't worry if this seems too quick. And then we can go by 45s. So if this is 0 and this is 1 half, halfway in between would be 1 fourth. So this would be a fourth of pi. So this is 1 fourth. If this is a half, that would make this 3 fourths. This is three-fourths of pi. This is one. So if we're going by quarters, this would then be five-fourths of pi. This is one and a half. This would be seven-fourths of pi. And this would be two. All right, so if we go by quarters. Next thing, on the previous page, we converted this to pi over six. So now let's just add one-sixth each time. So this is one-sixth. This would be two-sixths, and two over six reduces down to one-third. This is three over six, which reduces down to one-half. This would be 4 over 6, which reduces down to 2 thirds. Notice I'm just using these fractions and just throwing the pi in. So 4 over 6, 5 over 6. This is 6 over 6, which just reduces down to 1. 7 over 6. 8 over 6, which reduces down to 4 over 3. 9 over 6, which reduces to 3 over 2. 10 over 6, which reduces to 5 over 3. And 11 over 6. 
and of course 12 over 6, which just reduces down to 2. So those are your radian measurements. Like I said, we're going to spend a lot more time on this as the chapter goes on, um, and we are going to skip over this little bit on arc length.